The Dallas Stars are in the thick of the hunt for the NHL playoffs. They are battling. They had a rough game on Saturday, but bounced back well on Sunday. Dane Lewis of Locked On Stars is here to tell us what Dallas needs to do to make the playoffs this year. All that and more coming up on the Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome back to the Locked On NHL podcast. Gil Martin, glad to be with you here as I am every Monday and glad to welcome back to the show the host of Locked On Stars, Dane Lewis. Dane, great to have you here and tell you the stars are really in a tough battle for one of those last playoff spots in the Western Conference. What happened today? I mean, they were able to bounce back and pull off a very big win. Yeah, like you said, bounce back is the big word. They came out really flat on Saturday and and took a really rough loss at home to the New Jersey Devils and then had game two of a back-to-back on Sunday uh, against the Chicago Blackhawks, a divisional opponent. Uh, you know, Chicago near the bottom of the standings as well, but always just plays the stars really hard. And and that's been the case this season in the previous two meetings. And this one was no different. It was a, an offensive slugfest from the get go. And yeah, yeah. just big performances all around, especially from the stars top line. Joe Pavelski now has 72 points on the season. Jason Robertson, two goals. Rope Hintz got a goal in there. And I mean, j- just a big night all around in a game that the stars desperately needed to win. And now they they have that two point lead over the Vegas Golden Knights, and they're only one one point uh, behind Nashville, who holds that first wild card spot. And I know myself and many other Stars fans would rather have that first spot and be matched up against Calgary rather than Colorado. Yeah, that would be a, a tough challenge to face the Avalanche. Schedule doesn't get any easier. You have the the Lightning and the Wild as your next two games, but at least they are at home. What are the keys? I mean. You've been watching this team all year. What is the big difference between what when this team is on and when this team struggles? Yeah, the biggest key for this team down the stretch is finally getting back to what they do best, and that's the power play. And I say that the power play has actually been really bad for about the past month or so. But finally, on Sunday in Chicago, they went two for two, which you know still isn't a massive number, but going 100% on the power play, I think, is a step in the right direction. And you look back to the earlier stages of this season when the Stars were going on some win streaks and they were a top five power play team in the league at that time. And so they, they really just need to get back to that and finally come to form on the power play because they, they were a dangerous unit about halfway through the season. And then really ever since the All-Star break, it's been on a slow decline. And as of late, it's uh, it, it's fallen off quite a bit, but maybe starting to trend upward a little bit. Even their lone goal on Saturday against the Devils, I believe, was on the power play as well. So they seem to be finding a little bit of progress there. And also, uh, you know, you mentioned those two games, the the Lightning and the Wild at home. The Stars need to win their home games. I think they only have three more on the road, and it's a, a tough road trip out west in Canada. I think it's Vancouver, Edmonton, and Calgary. But the Stars have been really good at home this season, and they've been good at home against good teams. They, they've taken down Colorado and Edmonton, uh, L.A. They've taken down the Wild one other time at home this season. So you know, even if they split those games or they only get three points out of those two games, I expect them to play well and it should be pretty competitive matchups and, you know, always uh, entertaining when the wild come to town with the division rival. And uh, I'm sure on the stars team and in the fan base, still some, uh, some hurt feelings from the 2020 Stanley cup finals with the lightning coming into town. No question about that. How, how important is secondary scoring? I mean, the top line has been pretty consistent for most of the year, but Second line, third line, fourth line, do they need to do more for this team to be consistent? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we got a little bit of that tonight. Jamie Benn actually got the scoring started for the Stars. And then Tyler Sagan actually uh, came up with a really big, nice effort type of goal, kind of having to fight for, you know, to stay up on his feet behind the net. And then he comes back around with a, a little wraparound on Chicago. It actually was a huge insurance goal for the Stars. But, you know, they went out and got Vlad Nemestikov at the trade deadline. And they've just been trying so many different rotations and different pairings and you know trios as far as the second third and fourth lines and so far nothing has really clicked where you just have this established second line normally it's been either Sagan or Ben or both on the second line with someone else whether it's Denis Gurianov or Marion Studenich is another guy that they went out went and got 
a little bit before the trade deadline from New Jersey. So secondary scoring is big, and we, we've been getting it in bunches this season. But if the Stars really want to, one, make the postseason and go far, uh, a lot of those guys in the you know the bottom nine, if you want to call it, compared to the top line, really need to step up and, and find a way to contribute night in and night out. Because there are some times where that that top line, as good as they are, they get you know they'll, they'll get stopped uh, every now and then. And so it can't all be on them. As talented as those three are, you know they can't handle the load all by themselves. How about the goaltending? I mean, goaltending always paramount when it comes to playoff hockey and and down the stretch. Are you confident that the Stars have the goaltending they need to to get to the playoffs and then maybe even make a run if they do? Yeah, I, I really do think that they are set up well in the goaltending area. I think that's probably one of the stronger points of the team outside of that top line. And uh, Miro Haskin and John Klingberg kind of rounding out the decor. But Jake Ottinger has just been through so much this season. You go all the way back to training camp and he wasn't even on the NHL roster because, you know, we thought Ben Bishop was going to come back and Town Hugh Dobin was still healthy and Braden Holtzby also still healthy and actually started the year out pretty well. But, you know, Jake Ottinger has been thrown into the fire kind of this season and he's hung tough and gotten some big wins. And even, you know, he gives up, what is it, four goals to Chicago. But I mean, some of those were off of his own, you know, defenseman skates. And so only so much that he can do, but he's really done well for how young he is. I mean, he's still you know, not even really technically, he's still qualified as a rookie, even though he played a lot last season. And so the addition of Scott Wedgwood as well has actually been a pretty pleasant surprise. He's had some really nice performances. We've only seen him two, I think three or four times this season, but I think he's a, a qualified backup, but I, I fully expect Ottinger to, you know, get the green light in the playoffs if the stars make it there. And I'm, I'm confident. I think he'll, you know, he'll probably have some rough outings. Just that's what happens when you're a young guy in this league and you go to the postseason for the first time, but with the amount of veterans on the team, and, and especially just getting mentored by, you know, Ben Bishop still with the organization and Holtby still around, Hugh Dobin. Uh, I'm not sure how active he is. I know he had surgery a while back, but I'm sure that, you know, he's still in touch with the team. I mean, those are great guys to be learning from. So I know he's got the support around him and the, the team has his back going into the final stretch of the season. So fill in the blank for me here. The Dallas Stars will make the playoffs if... Ooh, that's a... Uh... There's a lot that could go into that, but I'll say the Dallas Stars will make the playoffs if the power play gets going and if the and if the goaltending stays solid, which I which I think it will. I think the goaltending is a given. It's just whether or not the offense is going to become consistent because the five on five did really well tonight in Chicago, and you know the power play did as well. But we need the we need the offense to be clicking at all cylinders at all times. You know you can't can't take any shifts off against some of the better teams in the league, and we'll have to that'll be put to the test on Tuesday when the Lightning come to town. No question about it. Dane, why don't you let our viewers and our listeners know where they could find the podcast and where they could find you on social media? Absolutely. The, the Locked On Stars podcast is on YouTube, and we are on every podcasting platform as well, Spotify, Apple, Google. Uh, and you can find myself on Twitter, just at Dane double underscore Lewis. And the show is on Twitter as well, at Locked On Stars. All right, Dane, thanks so much for doing this. Always a pleasure to have you here. Yep. Thank you, Gil.